What's up, everybody? So I was walking in Harbor Freight and I noticed that they had a kilowatt for sale. Now, this device is used to measure how much consumption electronics normally consume. Um, this isn't a professional tool by any means, but it does a good enough job that it gave me an idea. So this is my Raspberry Pi 4 and it has been overclocked to four gig, uh, two gigahertz. It's the four gigabyte model and I made this case. It's homemade out of Dollar Tree foam. It works pretty good. You know, this is where my SIM card came and I just used it as a top cover. Now the fan is a five volt fan and it's always running because it is directly connected to the five volt and the ground. Now my question is, at a worst case scenario, how much does it cost you to run a Raspberry Pi server? Now ARM architecture is very efficient and the Raspberry Pi is super efficient. Now, I actually added heat sinks and stuff, so maybe the fan is not really necessary. Like I can show you my Raspberry Pi tree. I added heat sinks and a fan might be might not be necessary. But I just want to know how much does it consume? Because if you run a home server and you have a normal laptop, you know, that could be a couple of dollars a month in energy. Uh, could you save that money by just running a Raspberry Pi? So today we're going to find out. Now, I don't have an official power supply. I do have a quick charge enabled charger. Uh, so don't come at me because I understand that a power supply and a phone charger aren't the same things. But I want to know for a fact how much this consumes. Because if I'm running a xCloud installation or any other Docker containers and the CPU cores are maxed out, what is the worst case scenario? Uh, if it was maxed out for an entire month, how much money will it cost me? And today we're going to figure that out. So I have the world's shortest extension cord and it just barely makes it onto my desk. So I had to move the camera uh, in order for it to fit in here. As you can see right now, um, the source of this is plugged into is drawing about 120 volts. It's not drawing, sorry, that's what the voltage is. Uh, we're not drawing anything, so no amps, no wattage. And if we check the Hertz, it's about almost 60 Hertz, which is within, a, like it's within a uh, starge margin of error. This purple button right here, normally if you leave something plugged in for like long period of time, this will tell you exactly how much that device has consumed. And we're not going to be using that because what we're going to do is that we're going to use math in order to calculate how much it would cost because I'm going to run the Raspberry Pi at its max output, like with all cores maxed out using Sysbench and see how much it totally draws. Let's take our adapter and plug it in. And now we're going to plug that into the Raspberry Pi. We're going to let it idle for a little bit so that we know what the idle consumption is at. So we want to check Watts. And now that it is in Watts, we're going to plug it in. The fan is spinning and it is drawing about 2.6 to 2.7. Oh, it spiked. This is because the Raspberry Pi is booting up and it's using the processor to get everything started and running, which is awesome. We can see the difference. So we have logged into our Raspberry Pi. I have three windows because I'm going to be showing you the clock speed in one. In this one, I'm going to be showing you H top. And then this one is going to be the benchmark that I'll be running, which will basically report the temperature back, um, back to us. All right, let me just adjust so that everything fits nicely. And then I'm going to add the overall consumption of the Raspberry Pi on idle. So right now, other than the SSH session, the Raspberry Pi is doing absolutely nothing. And I can see that on idle is hovering. I would say it's hovering about 2.5 to 2.8. So that is the idle temperature. And now we're going to see what happens when we max everything out. So in order to prove that the Raspberry Pi has been overclocked, 
I am going to run this command. As, as you can see, it's running at 600 megahertz right now. And then uh, once the load is added, it's going to jump to 2 gigahertz. So we're going to do htop. And as you can see, this is uh, a Raspberry Pi for the cores, the 4 gig model, which has 3.7 gigs. And everything's looking good. And just to prove, let's just do a new fetch just to show that this is Raspbian or Raspberry Pi OS. Oh, it recognizes it as Debian, Raspberry Pi 4 Model B, uh, three, seven something gigabytes. All right, of memory. Awesome. So right now we're going to be running the benchmark and the benchmark is based on explainingcomputers.com overclocking guide. I guess I can't type today. Awesome. So let's just see what the benchmark actually is. I basically just copied explaining computers code. It's basically a for loop um, and it goes to 100 right now, but we don't need 100. We can just go to 20 iterations. I did 100 because I was stress testing the Raspberry Pi to make sure that it worked pretty well. And this is going to report the temperature. Remember, the Raspberry Pi has a fan. Uh, and it's just going to calculate to 100,000 prime numbers using four threads. And it's just going to report the temperature every time that finishes. And once that finishes for the last time, it's also going to report the last temperature. And that's it. It's a pretty simple test. All right, so let's just exit. Let's just clear this and then let's run it. And so, so far, Raspberry Pi has been hovering about 2.5 to 2.8. Once I started H stop, I can see that it jumped to three. So just running H stop and the frequency report system is already causing a little bit of a power draw over three. So now it's ranging from 2.9 to 3.1, 3.2. And now that we're going to run the test, is going to be a lot more. Let's see how high it jumps. All right, so initial temperature 30 through 32 degrees C, which is nice. You can see every single core is maxed out right now because it's running the benchmark. And you can see that the frequency jumped to two gigahertz, which is good. Awesome. On the second iteration of the loop is already at 40 degrees C, third generation 43. But my question is, what is the power consumption like based on the kilowatt? Oh, 6.6. .6. That's pretty nice. All right, so let's just see if we can focus the camera just on the power draw. It's a little bit hard with the setup I got. Okay. So while the benchmark is running, it's currently in its sixth iteration, the Raspberry Pi is drawing about 6.6. .6. Let's make sure I zoom in and focus. All right, so 6.6 .6 watts at full capacity. And the temperature isn't even that bad with the fan and the heat sinks. I mean, right now it's hovering at 48. It's probably going to get to 50 degrees C and that's going to be pretty awesome. All right. And the benchmark finish. So after, I don't know, 20 iterations, the max temperature didn't reach over 52 degrees, which is pretty nice. To be honest, it didn't get to 53. Um, on initial testing, I haven't seen the Raspberry Pi reach 60 degrees. So this setup that I have right now is pretty awesome, to be honest. All right, so I crunched the numbers. So let's start out with the Raspberry Pi at idle, because the reality is your Raspberry Pi is not going to be maxed out for over a month unless you're doing some sort of cluster work for, you know, some really advanced things, whatever. So most of the time the request is going to come in, the Raspberry Pi is going to spike up to, you know, six 
watts of power and then once that task is completed it's going to go back and settle down to idle so how much will it cost you to run the raspberry pi just at idle for that month well i did the math and i'm going to show it to you and it's about 30 cents so i'm going to explain what i did and this is just for the idle by the way so I average about 2.6 watts. If you divide one watt hour, 1,000 watt hours to by 2.5 watts, you get 386 hours, which means it will take you that long, 384 hours, to consume one kilowatt hour of energy. And if you divide by 24, you get about 16.02 days. And if you divide 30 by that, you get about 1.87 kilowatt hours consumed per month and depending on where you live your watt your kilowatt hour cost may be higher maybe lower than this this is what it is for me at the moment um, I know there are some cheaper places that translates to about 30 cents to have your Raspberry Pi connected and I did the same thing for the overclock 6.6 .6 watt hours obviously your raspberry pi is not going to be maxed out this is just a worst case scenario and that's about 76 cents you can see the math here you know 1000 watt hours divided by 6.6 .6 watts one point that means 151 hours that's about 6.3 days and that is about 4.76 kilowatt hours consumed per month if it was maxed out and just for chits and giggles, I compare my laptop. My laptop just at idle consumes 18 watts. And that is about $2 in energy bills just to have my laptop plugged to the wall and on. And this is a laptop. This isn't even a desktop. A desktop might, might be like 4 or $5 a month just to have it on continuously. For me, I know that for a fact, sometimes some people are going to make the argument that it's better to have a laptop that is more powerful. You know, this has an i7. It's much more powerful than the Raspberry Pi CPU. And that's true because if you have a more powerful server, you're going to be able to do things a lot quicker. So this might spike up to 150 watts, get the task done in like a minute versus the Raspberry Pi, which might be hours. It's all a cost benefit analysis. For me, I plan on using the Raspberry Pi for very specialized tasks like a Nextcloud installation, for example. And I also want to try out Rust Desk. Rust Desk is already free, it's open source, but what I want to do is use the Raspberry Pi as my own server for Rust Desk so that I can connect to my devices with a more reliable connection, maybe a faster connection, because I'm pretty sure Rust Desk throttles your connections and it might lead to uh, worse images for remote desktop. Anyways, this was pretty fun to do and I hope to do it again.